Okay, today we are covering 6.3, which is binomial radical expressions. So I'm hoping you remember that when we talk about binomials, that would be something like a plus b or a minus b. And because it has a radical in it, then that means there's going to be a square root of a and or a square root of b. So that's what's making it binomial. There's a plus sign in between two radicals. Okay, so what you need to remember is that like radicals, you've heard that before, that's like like terms, like radicals are radical expressions with the same index, that little number on the outside, and the same radicand, big number on the inside. Bigger word goes with the bigger, with the uh, inside, smaller word goes with that small number on the outside. So we have an example here. That's a square root of 2. 3 square roots of 2 equals 4 square roots of 2. Um, cube root of 7 minus 5 cube roots of 7 is negative 4 cube roots of 7. You're going to hear me say a lot, um, so you might get tired of it. But when you get into ones with variables that are a little bit harder to read, you're saying the cube root of 9x squared y minus 8 cube roots of 9x squared y. It gets a little cumbersome to say that, so I actually refer to them as blobs. So this is like a blob plus 8 blobs equals 9 blobs, because those blobs have to be exactly the same. And if you have a blob and you have nine, 8 more, then you have a total of 9 blobs. If you have a blob and you take away 8 blobs, then you have negative 7 blobs. That thing does not change. The blob does not change. It is does not become blob squared or anything of that sort. So, combining radical expressions, sums and differences. Okay, so they're showing you that you use the distributive property, but we've already talked about it. If the blobs are the same, then you either add the numbers that are on the outside, or you're going to subtract those numbers on the outside. But it's the distributive property that allows us to do that. Okay, so when I'm looking at what is the simplified form of each expression, so I have 7 cube roots of 5 minus 4 cube root, oh, square roots of 5. Okay, so this is actually a 2, and so that itself cannot be simplified. So in the answer blank on a quiz or a test, you actually are going to write the same thing because there's nothing that you can do to simplify it. But you don't want to leave it blank or you don't want to, you need to put the same thing in there because it can't be simplified. Okay, looking at this next one, 3x times a blob plus 4x times a blob, these two are the same exact thing. Okay, they're not going to change. What's 3x plus 4x? That is 7x. So my answer becomes 7x times that blob, and that blob was the square root of xy. Okay, um, again, look at those blobs and make sure they're the same. So I have the fifth root of 3x squared and the fifth root of 3x squared. So those are my blobs. 17 blob minus 15 blobs is going to be two blobs, and those blobs are the fifth root of 3x squared. That does not change. Okay. Um, a little application. Find the perimeter of the window if each small square is 6. And this is actually a pretty good uh, application here. So if each of these small ones is 6, okay, 6 and 6, then from geometry, you should remember your special right triangles. This is 6 square roots of 2, whether it's here or whether it's here. So if that's 6 square roots of 2, how many of them do I have? 6 and 6 and 6, so this is 18 square roots of 2 on that side, and this side is uh, 6 times 2, 12 square roots of 2. And so how do we find the perimeter of something? The perimeter is 2 times the length plus the width. So I'm going to have 2 times... 12 squirts of 2 plus 18 squirts of 2 because it's not going to matter which one's the length or the width. But 12 squirts of 2 plus 18 squirts of 2 is 30 squirts of 2. And again, we've had this before, but it's on the outside, then you multiply it by the outside. 
squirt. So that becomes 60 squirts of 2. This is a word problem, so you would actually want to put that into your calculator and find out that that is approximately 84.9 inches. So that's what we have there. All right, let's do a few more. Whoops, not bad. All right, so what is the simplest form of the expression the cube root of 250 cube root of plus the cube root of 54 minus the cube root of 16? Okay, y'all, you're thinking if it's cubed roots, then you need to think to yourself um, the perfect cubes. One is a perfect cube, which we don't really need to know, but the next perfect cube is 8. Um, 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed is 27. 4 cubed is 64. And 5 cubed is 125. And I don't think we need to go much further than that. The next one's 216, so that's not going to work. But you're looking to see if these are factors of those numbers, number one. Number two, these are somewhat contrived problems, so they're trying to get you to simplify so that they all have the same radicand so that we can combine them. So the square root of, uh, excuse me, the cube root of 250 is going to be the cube root of 2 times 125. And the cube root of 54 is going to be 2 times 27. So once you find a number that goes into them, it's going to most likely go into all of them. And um, of course, then we have the cube root of 2 times 8. Okay, so each of those were divisible by 2, and each of them had a perfect cube as a factor. That's why I'm saying it's contrived, because they're trying to get you to practice these concepts. So the cube root of 125 is 5. So this is 5 cube roots of 2. Cube root of 27 is 3. So I'm left with 3 cube roots of 2. And the cube root of 8 is 2. And again, have the cube root of 2 underneath. So now I have the exact same radicand, exact same exponent. 5 plus 3 is 8. And 8 minus 2 is 6. 6 root 2. Do not forget the index because that would change the problem and get your answer wrong. Okay? All right. Now we have a product. Okay? And again, binomials, we've talked about this a lot, so hopefully you realize product means I'm going to have to FOIL that. Okay? So my first terms would be 3 times 2 plus my outside terms. Outsides, maybe I'll do this. Let's do first. Those are my first terms. Uh, let's go with the outside terms. This is an outside term, and that's an outside term. So I'm going to add that 3 times 4 root 5 is 12 square roots of 5. Let's see if I can bring this down some. All right. And then I'm going to go with the inside terms. So here's an inside term, and here's an inside term. So that gives me 2 times 2 square roots of 5 is 4 square roots of 5, and then I get the last term, and the last term in each binomial is what we're looking at, 2 root 5 plus times 4 root 5, okay, you multiply the outside and you get 8, and the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. Please don't write square root of 25, people are going to forget that's what it is, but this is that concept, y'all, square root of x times the square root of x equals x. So when you have two things exactly like, then you get that. We did it earlier with the n. Okay? So to simplify this, this of course is 40, and 40 plus 6 is 46. And these are both radical 5 with the same index, so 12 plus 4 is 16. So we end up with 46 plus 16 square roots of 5. All right, moving down, some more products. Okay, and I'm really hoping that y'all are recognizing this. This is that wonderful product that we do so much, A minus B times A plus B, because they look exactly the same, but they have the sign in between. The sign of the second term is different. And when you multiply that together, you get A squared minus B squared. So when I multiply this one together, I'm going to get 6 squared. Actually, I don't even want to write like that. Let's go ahead and write 36. 
6 squared minus that times that is 12. Because when I multiply the same thing by itself, I get what I have. So 36 minus 12 is 24. Okay, look at the next one. Again, they look exactly the same, except for the sign of the second term is different. So 3 times 3, or 3 squared is 9. The square root of 8 times the square root of 8 is 8. And 9 minus 8 is 1. Okay, so this thing that we have right here, very, very important for you to remember. Okay, so it'll just save you some time. Okay, so rationalizing our denominator. Let's go do some of that right now bring that up. Alright, so similar to what we did with I, okay, when we do these problems, when you rationalize the denominator, you're going to multiply by the conjugate of your denominator. Okay, uh, we've always done it with the denominator, but just in case anybody forgets. Multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. Okay, what's a conjugate? If it's a plus b, the conjugate is changing the sign to the opposite, ch changing the sign of the second term only. Okay, so this particular one I have here. Ignore that bell. Um, square root of three, square root of five. I change the sign of the second one. And of course, we always have to do the same thing to the top and the bottom. Okay, so I like to do the bottom first because that's the easiest one. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. Square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5, and it's always going to be minus between them. Okay, and the top, I just have one turn times that. So 2 times, 2 square roots of 7 times the square root of 3. If it's on the outside, y'all, it stays on the outside. If it's on the inside, okay, that's what we've just done. 7 and 3 don't have any perfect squares, so that's going to become the square root of 21. And then when I multiply it by the second one, again, the 2 is on the outside. 7 times 5 is 35 with no particular um, square roots. Okay. Now, I don't know if you all can see this, Okay, but this right here is equal to negative 2. And there's a 2 in every term. So it might help you to simplify this Okay, if you can't see it. 2 square roots of 21 over negative 2 uh, plus 2 square roots of 35 over negative 2. So when you simplify that, those 2's cancel and you're left with the negative square root of 21. These 2's cancel, leaving with the square root of 35. Okay. Um, breaking it up will help you remember that 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 number has to go into both of these terms up there. And so a lot of times people forget that. Okay, so the next one, what am I going to multiply? This is our last problem. And again, you write exactly what you have, but you change the sign in the second term. And then, of course, do the same thing on the top and the bottom. So that's going to give me on the bottom, square the first term. There's no radical, so I actually have to square that number. There is a radical here, so that number doesn't change, and it's always minus, okay? And then I've got to multiply, again, distribute 4x times this binomial. So 4x times 3 is 12x, and 4x times the square root of 6 is 4x square roots of 6. So what does this become? This actually becomes negative 3. Uh, actually, it's not negative 3. What on earth am I thinking? Okay, it's positive 3. And positive 3 doesn't go into both of them. It goes into 12, but it doesn't go into 4. So you don't have to, you can just leave it. It doesn't simplify into both terms. So you're better off just leaving it as 12x plus 4x square roots of 6 over 3. Please do not think that 3 can go into 6. This is outside of a radical. That's inside of a radical. So they cannot cancel or simplify in any way. And that's the end of our binomial radical expressions. If you have any questions, please come see me.